All right, what's happening? I'm Jabal Rico from Street Scores, and we're just here to have a little bit of fun today. I'm going to give you all all of the Washington Commanders jersey number updates, especially from a lot of the, well, all of the free agency signings that we had in this 2024 free agency class. And then also there's some number switches as well from current players that maybe had to move because a more notable free agent is coming in, whatever. We have a lot of different number changes, a lot of number updates, everything. And then of course, me being Rico of Street Scores, it just can't be that simple. So we got to dive into what these numbers may mean for some of these players. Like what are their projected roles based on their numbers? Are they more of a safety? Are they more of a linebacker? Are they more of like a defensive end and a 4-3? Or are they more like a 3-4 outside linebacker? What are, they, are they more of a corner or are they more of a safety? So we're going to take a look at all of the updated numbers that have changed since, I guess, the end of the 2023 regular season. And we're going to dive into what that may potentially mean. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. When I get back home off of vacation, I'm going to be able to come to y'all with more videos of course i'm gonna get to the film sessions and things like that and also don't forget to support the instagram the TikTok, the twitter and the facebook accounts that we now have going for street scores with daily content uploaded there as well and without further ado man let's go and get to it let's get adam adam All right, so first of all, the Washington Commanders quarterback that we recently signed, Marcus Mariota, will be wearing the number zero. And the last player to wear that number for the Washington Commanders was Jace Whitaker. First of all, I'm hoping that that number literally represents how many throws he will attempt for us in 2024 and hopefully ever. I'm hoping that zero is I'm here to throw zero passes for y'all. That's <laughs> I'm really hoping for that. But just to let you know, Overall for the NFL, because zero is a you know a pretty rare number in the NFL. Last season, 22 players started the year wearing the number zero, but no quarterbacks. The NFL brought back the number last season after a 50-year hiatus. Entering 2023, only 41 players had ever worn zero or double zero in NFL history. And the most famous zero, of course, is Hall of Fame center Jim Otto, who wore double zero. But Marcus Mariota is the first quarterback in NFL history to ever wear the number zero and again I hope that represents how many passes he ends up thinking he's gonna um, throw for the Washington Commanders I'm hoping whoever we take a number two we never have to worry about them ever coming out of a game I hope they're able to start week one stay healthy kill it go crazy from there on out and Marcus Mariota never even needs to step on the field moving on the Washington Commanders also Updated the jersey number for defensive end slash edge rusher, Dante Fowler. He's wearing number six. That was last worn by our kicker, Joey Sly, from the 2023 season. And you can tell from that number that he's going to be used basically how he's always been used as like a situational pass rush specialist. Not like this edge setting, run stuffing, defensive end type of guy. He's the situational pass rusher that's a little bit smaller. More of like the Von Miller mode than like a big... Daniil Hunter, Montez Sweat, Chase Young type of guy. To basically the best. That's why he's wearing a single digit number. Makes all of the sense in the world. Then you have Frankie Luvu. He's switching to single digits. He will now wear number four for the Washington Commanders. And the last person to wear that number four, of course, was Curtis Samuel. That's interesting. We're going from wide receiver wearing that number to a middle Mike linebacker. And I even like this Will linebacker, this hybrid linebacker safety guy. No, like the pure middle running over guards to get to the quarterback linebacker and Frankie Louvu. I thought that was pretty interesting. Remember, he wore number 50 with the Jets and number 49 with the Panthers. And now he'll wear number four with us. So that's really weird. I guess that's what he wanted because I'm pretty sure if he wanted either of those numbers, they were available. But first of all, 49 for what he wore with the Panthers sounds more like a hybrid safety linebacker type of player. But he always plays bigger and more aggressive than even that number. I felt like 49 was even too small for him, let alone four. I think he makes the most sense somewhere in the 50s, like especially that number 50 that he had with the Jets. I think 54 would fit very well on him. But four is pretty interesting. 
it's probably gonna make him look faster on the field just because of that low single digit number that he's wearing right there. He's probably literally just gonna look faster just because instead of wearing 54, he's just wearing four. He's gonna look skinnier, everything. You know how numbers kind of do that to our eyes a little bit. And then moving on, speaking of number 54, guess who's wearing that? You guessed it, linebacker Bobby Wagner will be wearing the number 54, last worn by ter terrible long snapper Cameron Cheeseman. Yeah, you, you should have been gave that number up. That's a really good linebacker number. We already knew we were doomed that the fact that we didn't have any linebackers that wanted to wear that number. That's how you could tell our linebacker core was bad. And then we had a long snapper wearing number 54. That's just not healthy. That just that was just doomed to fail from the jump, <laughs> basically. Also, Washington Commanders wide receiver Jamison Crowder is now switching to number 80, which was last worn by Curtis Hodges. And I have no idea what number Curtis Hodges is wearing. He probably isn't even, even technically on the roster right now. But he wore 83 last season, and now he's switching back to his 80 that he prefers to wear anyway. So it makes all of the sense in the world once it became available for him. Since he's now here to start the season, remember we signed him like mid-season or like well into the, the year of 2023. So I guess he didn't have the chance to come in here and like get the number that he really wanted. Kind of just had to take what they gave him. Now he's here before we get started, before we even get to the draft. So he was like, let me go ahead and get that 80 before somebody else come in here and try to get that. Moving on, Jeremy Chen is now going to wear the number 11. And just to let you know, Jake Fromm was the last person to wear that. And even as a Georgia Bulldog fan, yeah, Jake Fromm, you got to come up off that number. If somebody notable on this team wants that number, you got to let him have it, dog. And don't don't even try to negotiate any type of deals, like a certain payment or nothing. No, just come up off that number, big dog. So then it's like, what is Jake Fromm wearing? But again, it really doesn't matter because after we take a quarterback second overall, Fromm will more than likely even be quarterback four. Like it's going to be number two overall pick rookie. Then it's going to probably be Marcus Mariota, then Jeff Driscoll, then Jake Fromm. So he gets no priority on number selections. Come up off that number, dog, and accept whatever number they give you. And just be happy that you're even on the NFL roster. I don't know what number he may end up with, but it's probably going to be something that he just doesn't want at all. And at the end of the day, again, you're quarterback for it, bro. Just be happy you're on the team. And then also the Washington Commanders offensive lineman, Nick Allegretti, who's going to be an interior offensive lineman for us, more than likely projected to be our starting left guard. He will wear number 67, which was last worn by Aaron Montero, as far as the commanders are concerned. And he was already an interior offensive lineman before I even knew what jersey number he was gonna wear when he joined the Washington Commanders, but now it's super confirmed. Like, you better not be playing tackle with a number 67. But then again, you got Penny Sewell out there for the Lions playing at an all-pro level wearing a number 58 at offensive tackle, which I hated. Ill, yuck. It looks terrible, but he be balling in it. I mean, maybe I'm just old-fashioned, but I hate that number for him. But 67 sounds like a guard, maybe a center, backup, whatever, but it definitely doesn't sound like a tackle. And speaking of interior offensive linemen, Michael Dieter is also wearing a number in the 60s. He's wearing literally flat out 60, just 6-0, which makes a lot of sense because he's going to be like our backup interior offensive lineman. You get, he's going to be like the, the starting center if something were to happen to Tyler Biadish. He would be our starting, probably one of our guards. It would be between him and like Chris Paul, who would be next up if... Nick Allegretti would get hurt. So that makes sense. He's going to be an interior offensive lineman. We can move on. And then also speaking of Tyler Biadish, he will wear the number 63, which of course is the number that he had when he was with the Cowboys for the many years that he was with them. So that just makes a lot of sense. He comes over from the Dallas Cowboys and keeps the same exact number that he had with them. And nobody really notable had that number before him. So we can just keep it pushing. Then Commanders linebacker Keandre Jones is wearing the number 47, and that was last worn by Kalik Hudson. And just to let you know, Keandre Jones actually weighs exactly 220 pounds like Kalik Hudson, but is just three inches taller. So basically, he's projected to probably be like in a similar hybrid linebacker safety like role as like a depth piece. Who knows if he actually ends up even making a 53 man roster? But as far as like what he's going to be doing while we see him in training camp and things like that, while we still have 90 players on our roster, or technically 91 with the Nigerian defensive lineman that we brought in that I'm pretty excited about. 
He's going to be like a hybrid linebacker type of guy, kind of like a big Buffalo nickel. Again, as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I like to call it the star position. But either way, you can tell by his number, for it to be the exact same number as who had it last, Khalid Hudson, for him to be the exact same weight, 220 pounds exactly as him, I'm expecting him to basically be that same exact role. Then Washington Commanders running back Jeremy McNichols is going to wear 31. And of course, a lot of y'all, when y'all hear number 31, you guessed it. Cameron Curl. He was the last one to wear that number for the Washington Commanders. And that sounds like a third down back. Like that sounds like a receiving back JD McKissick type of guy. 31 makes sense, especially since Austin Eckler's 30. So if you're like one spot behind him on the depth chart, I guess as receiving back, receiving back number one wearing number 30, receiving back number two wearing 31, it just makes too much sense right there. And again, even just number wise, if I heard a running back was wearing number 31, I'm not really expecting him to run people over. I'm expecting him to run around people and catch passes out of the backfield. That makes a lot of sense. Then you have my boy defensive back Noah Igbenogany. He's going to wear number 19. That was last worn by Jared Patterson. And that's pretty interesting. That doesn't really sound like a cornerback number to me. That sounds more like a really fast wide receiver. But if he likes it, I love it. Hey, man, I don't think it's ugly. But I just think that, you know, it's a little strange right there. I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, tight end Zach Ertz. He's going to wear number 86. I'm not going to lie. With all these free agency signings that we've had, I almost forgot that we had Zach Ertz on our team, which is really crazy. But he's going to wear number 86. And that was last worn by Mitchell Tinsley. And that makes a lot of sense, too, because that's the number that he literally wore his entire career so far, but both the Eagles and the Cardinals for the multiple years that he was with both of them. And now Mitchell Tinsley is going to have to pretty much come up off that number because, you know, it's Zach Ertz. Like, I mean, Mitchell Tinsley, I have big hopes for you, but you're not as proven as a Zach Ertz. You're not a super veteran like him. You're just one year removed from being an undrafted free agent. So I'm not surprised. So Mitchell Tinsley probably wanted to switch numbers anyway with his play style he seems like a single digit number type of guy like something somewhere at least in the teens and he wore number five in college so it makes a lot of sense so that i'm just I, i'm pretty sure that even if we didn't sign zach Ertz, he would probably want a double digit like a low in the teens number or like a single digit number anyway because it'll probably make him even look faster and speaking of it Mitchell Tinsley will now switch from 86 to 18, who was last worn by Jonathan Williams. And there you go. I mean, that makes too much sense. He sounds like a number 18. That's way better than an 86 for a guy like him, man. Being a quick, fast, smaller receiver, gadget type of guy, returner. I, I think he would even just look better and faster wearing 18 than 86. 86 sounds like a tight end, or at the very least, like a big receiver that makes contested catches and things like that. That's the complete opposite of what he is. Then Commander's wide receiver Olamide Zacchaeus is wearing number 14. And of course, last worn by quarterback Sam Howe. I mean, man, I... I I like Sam Howe, so it does make me a little sad to see his number get taken that quickly. But it is what it is, man. I mean, there's only a certain, there's a limited amount of numbers you can have, and we're already at 90 people on the roster. It's only but so many numbers you can pick from. And that number makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's, again, just like Mitchell Tinsley, he's a quick, faster, small receiver, and that's a, a number for fast, quick, small receivers. I think that's perfect. Somewhere low in the teens, he's probably going to look faster because of it. I think, honestly, like literally no exaggeration, if he were to go out there wearing an 86, he would look slower on the field. I'm telling y'all, man, it plays on your eyes a little bit. And then speaking of numbers from players that had a lot of notoriety from the Commanders fan base last year. You also have Cleveland Farrell, the defensive end slash edge rusher. He's going to wear 99, which of course was last worn by Chase Young. And that makes all of the sense in the world. He's definitely like a big edge setting, run stuffing defensive end. And even the same thing with Dorrance Armstrong, who's gonna wear 92 for like the big defensive end. Even though he's more of like a pass rusher while Cleveland Farrell is more of like an edge set and run stuffer, both of those guys are big. I mean, Dorrance Armstrong is six foot four, 260 pounds, and he's closer to like a Montez Sweat bill than a Micah Parsons or Von Miller bill. So both of those guys having numbers in the 90s make a lot of sense, while Dante Fowler, again, is wearing that really low single digit number, number six, which again, Based on his play style, he's more of a, a number six in Dorrance Armstrong and Cleveland Farrell or more so guys that will be just a super strong set in the edge type of guys that 
I'm predicting Dorrance Armstrong and Cleveland Farrell to even sometimes have Jamin Davis on their outside shoulder rushing the passer and things like that. So they're definitely more of the edge setting, strong defensive ends, whereas Dante Fowler is going to be situational pass rusher, pretty much what we hope Shaka Tony would turn into. Basically just a glorified edge rushing linebacker more than like an actual defensive lineman, defensive end type of guy. Also, cornerback Michael Davis, or some people may call him defensive back, but I think he's straight up a cornerback. He's going to wear number 24. And of course, that was last worn by my dog, Antonio Gibson. And you know, I hate to see him leave, man. I mean, first of all, I just thought that he has a lot of potential and he's from the metro Atlanta area. So I've always been rooting for him strongly, but then he's going to go to the enemy over there with Shay. So now she's going to be rooting for him. And I just, I don't know, man. I hate that. I hate that move out of all of the teams he could have went to. Why the Patriots, man? But out of the way, 24 is somewhat of like a cornerback and a running back number. I think both of those numbers fit for either of those positions. I think that's straight. Nothing to really dive into right there. He's clearly a corner. I don't see him as potentially playing like a safety or anything. I think he's just purely an outside corner for us. And then, of course, Austin Eckler is going to get back his number that he had with the Chargers because nobody impactful had that number before him. So he's going to continue to wear number 30, which was last worn by Joshua Kalu. That that just makes too much sense. Wearing number 30, 30 his entire career in that sounds like a receiver running back like we talked about earlier with number 31 for Jeremy McNichols makes too much sense. And then we can just go ahead and sprint through a few of these. We have kicker Brandon McManus wearing number three, which was last worn by Byron Pringle. And that's why a lot of these updates still matter too, because it also lets you know that, oh yeah, maybe Byron Pringle is no longer on the roster. Because I'm not going to lie, I forgot he was no longer on the roster. I forgot that we just signed him to like a cheap little one-year deal last year and that he's an unrestricted free agent. So looking into what number Brian McManus is wearing and finding out that Byron Pringle was the last one to have that number. Now I remember Byron Pringle is no longer with the team. And then also quarterback Jeff Driscoll will be wearing number 16. Last person to wear that number was D'Angelo Mandel. And then also defensive back James Pierre is wearing number 29, which of course was last worn by Kendall Fuller. And that's going to be so weird to go out there for the burgundy and gold and not see Kendall Fuller. Even from the time that he went with the Chiefs for a little while, just overall, since we drafted him, he's been with the commanders for a, well, the burgundy and gold for a very long time. It's just going to be weird not to see him out there wearing number 29. And when you see somebody else wearing number 29, it will no longer be a Kendall Fuller type of guy which is crazy. Also, long snapper Tyler Ott has the number 69. He's worn that number with the Seahawks, the Ravens, pretty much everywhere he's been in the NFL, so that makes a lot of sense. Then Anthony Pittman gets to keep his number from the Detroit Lions. That's number 57. And I'm telling you right now, that's a number that nobody else wants, dog. That number is awful. I'm not surprised at all that he was able to bring that number with him from the Detroit Lions. I'm not surprised at all that that number was available. That sounds like a linebacker playing special teams, which is literally who he is. You don't really expect Anthony Pippen to get on the field for the defense. He's technically a linebacker by title, but he's purely a special teams ace. He's a great special teams player don't get me wrong he was arguably the best special teams player that the Detroit Lions had so it's phenomenal that we re-signed all pro Jeremy Reeves and we brought him in now we have two top tier special teamers on the same team along with the new long snapper new kicker everything and then new special teams coach Larry Izzo I'm very excited about what our special teams will look like especially with the NFL going to these new rules that nobody's ever played with at the NFL ever in NFL history. So this is going to all just be completely new for everybody, but especially for us because we have so many new guys here. Because remember, Jeremy Reeves, even though he's been a part of the Commanders for a while now, he got hurt early on last season. So this whole special teams unit is going to look completely different from last year because even Jeremy Reeves technically wasn't here last year. He was on injured reserve since early on. But going back to my main point, yeah, Anthony Pittman, you didn't have to worry at all about 57 potentially being taken by anybody on the Commanders because nobody wants that number. I hate that number, dog. I'm rooting for you. I really hope you go crazy, but I hate that number, dog. And then shouts out to my boy, George Carmi, at GCarmi21 for bringing this up. Speaking of numbers, it's pretty crazy that the team has added 20 players over the offseason. I can't recall another overhaul like this. The commanders also still have nine draft picks on deck. Now, I'm pretty sure the current draft picks that we have right now are going to change. I wouldn't be surprised if we take two of our 
second or third round picks, package those together to move back up into the first round and get a tackle. I wouldn't be surprised if we package some picks somewhere else, like maybe to move up higher in the second, maybe take two of those thirds and get another second round pick. I would, I would be shocked, I'm not gonna lie, if with the picks that we have currently today, we end up using those exact picks in the draft, but it's still really crazy that we have nine draft picks going into this draft, man, nine. I think the Chicago Bears have two? Something crazy for some like really ridiculously no, no low number. So I'm really happy. We've already added the most free agents out of any NFL team. And then we're also going into the draft. We're one of the teams with the most picks going into the draft. So as far as like what a team look like last year going into this year, we're going to have the most dramatic change. I mean, of course, I mean, ownership wise, Josh Harris wasn't here yet. He, he bought the team in July. So as of today, well, even let's just say at the end of the draft, especially when you add in undrafted free agents, this is going to be a completely different team from early May compared to last year. Because new owner, new GM, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new everything. Really, the only people that stayed around were our wide receivers coach, our quarterbacks coach, and maybe like Ryan Kerrigan technically moved into a slightly different role. And... That may be about it. Maybe one or two other people, but nobody high up in the tier list of power and responsibilities. So this is an entire, again, Josh Harris did not own the team until July. So as of early May, this is a completely different team. New franchise, face of the franchise, rookie quarterback leading this team instead of Sam Howell. I mean, everything's gonna be different. So this is just crazy. Sign the most free agents, and we're one of the teams that have the most draft picks going into this draft. It's just crazy how different. If you just look back 365 days, by the time it's May 1st and we look back to 2023 May 1st, it's just going to be incredible. We probably are the most different team in the NFL within that one year. It's absolutely chaotic, man. And also, before we get up out of here, just to let you know, I talked about this in my other video. But when we're talking about jersey numbers for potential quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels, Where's five? If he were to come to the commanders, Tress Wade would have to give up number five for him. And I can't believe that some people are sticking up for Tress Wade to hold on to that number. I mean, if Jaden Daniels doesn't care about getting that five, cool. I guess that's a win-win for everybody. But if Jaden Daniels wants that five and we because we drafted him, there's no way people are trying to get Tress Wade to hold on to that number. That shouldn't even be a debate, man. That's ridiculous. And then you have Drake May if we were to bring him in. Casimir Allen wears his number 10. Casimir Allen would probably would have to come up off that number as well. Then you also have number seven, maybe, but that's Joe Theismann's number. But then again, they haven't been afraid to let people just run around with legendary Brigney and Gold numbers here and there. So I'm pretty sure number seven is available. And then you also have number 12, if they want to go that route, I guess, if that's one of the numbers they'd be willing to take. But just to warn you, both number five and number 10 for Jaden Dales and Drake May are already taken if whichever one, whoever we ended up drafting, and somebody's gonna have to come up off that number to give them their number, unless they want seven or 12. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you about everything discussed in the video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Really appreciate all y'all, man. Make sure you stay tuned. Again, even though I'm on vacation, I'm keeping y'all updated. I'm trying to get back to two videos a day, even though I'm on vacation. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Make sure you do not leave without leaving a like button and all of that type of stuff. Appreciate y'all supporting the channel and be on the lookout for more content. I'm working on a cap space update, but every time I look, we end up signing somebody different and I'm still hoping that we sign Justin Simmons at safety. So we'll see how that goes. And I have a, I have like a big update for top 30 visits. Like we're bringing in more players. I want to give y'all an update on that. That'll probably be tomorrow as in Friday, April 5th. So stay tuned for that. And I'm gonna catch y'all later. Appreciate y'all. I'm out.